In this video, we're going to be talking about the second derivative test. And what the second derivative test does is it gives us an alternative way to figure out the relative extrema, or the relative maximums and minimums. So before I move into the new way, let's review what we had to do in the old way. So far, the way that we know to find relative extrema is basically the same way that we found increasing and decreasing, and then we saw how our graph changed. So our first step was to find the domain. Our second step was to take the derivative and then set that derivative equal to zero, and that gave you the critical value. You put those critical values on a number line and tested the intervals in between. If your interval came up to be positive, that means your graph was increasing. If your interval was negative, that means your graph was decreasing. And we knew any time our graph went from increasing to decreasing or going up to going down, that created a high point on our graph, which gave us a maximum. And any time our graph went from decreasing to increasing or going down to going up, that gave us a low point on the graph, which gave us a minimum. So therefore, that's how we found our relative extrema, maximums and minimums. Well, the second derivative gives us an alternative way to doing this. So let's talk about what it actually entails. The first few steps are actually the same. So we still need to find the domain because that's still important. We still need to find the first derivative, f prime of x and set it equal to zero and still come up with the critical values. So steps one through three are exactly the same. Now, instead of doing the number line test here, now we can do the second derivative test. So after we find the first derivative, then we move into the second derivative, and we plug those critical values that we found back before into our second derivative. So we do f double prime of our critical values. We don't necessarily care what number we get out, but we care about what sign it is. If it comes out to be a positive number, then that tells us we have a minimum at that critical value. If we plug in our critical value and it comes out to be a negative number, then that tells us we have a maximum at that critical value. So it might be a little bit opposite of what you think. You probably think positive max and negative min, well, it's opposite. If you get a positive value, that tells us we have a minimum there. And if we get a negative value, that tells us we have a maximum there. Well, you're probably wondering why is that the case? Well, let's look at some images of this to help us understand this a bit farther. So notice over here, I have a minimum value. And if I look at my concavity, my graph is concave up. So if my graph is concave up, that means it's going to be positive. I have a extrema point on that graph, gives me a horizontal tangent line. Well, if my graph is concave up with an extrema, then that tells us that we have a minimum there. If my graph is concave down, that tells us that our second derivative is negative. And if I have an extrema point there, that extrema point only has a chance to be a maximum. So now we know why the second derivative test works the way that it does. So let us actually do an example with this. So we want to use the second derivative test to find the relative maximum and relative minimum of this given function here. f of x equals 2x to the third plus 3x squared minus 12x minus 7. No matter which way we do it, whether we do it with the sign chart or whether we do it with the second derivative test. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to talk about domain of this function because that can have an effect on the rest of the on the rest of the process. We do not have any square roots involved. We don't have any fractions involved. We don't have any applications involved. So my domain of this one is all real numbers. So I don't have to worry about that one there. Okay, the next thing that we need to do is we need to take the derivative. So that gives us 6x squared plus 6x minus 12. And then again, no matter which method we do, we need to set that derivative equal to 0. If we factor it, we can factor out a common factor of 6. Gives us x squared plus x minus 2. 
continue to factor it using our trinomial method of x plus 2, x minus 1. And then we set each of those equal to 0, giving us the critical values of x equals negative 2 and x equals positive 1. So these are the critical values. These are our possible extrema, either the maximums, the minimums, or the plateaus. Now we need to figure out whether they are maximums or minimums or something else. So before we tested this by doing the number line, now we're going to test it by doing the second derivative test. So that means we need to figure out what the second derivative is. So we compute f double prime of x from my last derivative here. That gives me 12x plus 6. And we substitute in our critical values, one at a time. So I do f double prime of negative 2, and I need to figure out whether that's positive or negative, and f double prime of 1, and I need to figure out whether that is positive or negative. So if I plug in negative 2, I get 12 times negative 2 plus 6 gives me a negative value. So that tells me that I have a maximum when your x value is equivalent to negative 2. If I plug 1 into my second derivative, that gives me 12 times 1 plus 6, which gives me a positive. Well, a positive means that we have concave up, so we have a low point. So that means it is a minimum value when x equals 1. You're always more than welcome to double check this by using your graphing calculator. So let's do that now. So I have my original function substituted into my y equals. Let me graph it on my standard window, zoom 6. Let me adjust my max and min values here so we can see the whole graph. So now I see my maximums and my minimums. I see when x equals negative 2, I have a high point. And I see when x is equal to 1, I have a low point. And that's exactly what I found by my second derivative test. When x is equal to negative 2, I have a high point or a maximum. Or when x is equal to 1, I have a low point, I have a minimum. Now this just asks us to find where they are. If it asks us to figure out where the actual values were, we would need to plug those into the original equation. So we could figure out what f of negative 2 is to figure out what the high point actually is, and f of 1 to figure out what the low point actually is. So I'm going to do this using my calculator. I have this plugged in. I'm going to hit my trace button. When I type in negative 2, that plugs it into my original function that says my high point is equal to 13. And when I plug in 1, I get my low point of negative 14. So that is my actual maximum value and my actual minimum value. So we've used the second derivative test. We found the second derivative, plugged in our numbers to see whether they are negative to give us maximum or positive to give us minimum, and that gave us out the relative extrema of the graph, maximums and minimums.